Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is uh, Studio Photography Insights Google Plus Hangout uh, with me, Dave Nietzsche, and many other great photographers. And I'm really happy uh, to have you guys here. I didn't count which, uh, which number is that, so we don't care. <laughs> That's just fun. I'm going to post broadcasting publicity. And, uh, I'm still a little dark, but okay. I'm so okay. The dark is good. Okay, that's fine. You know, when you're talking, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Dude. So let me check if I can post uh, Hangout. No way. Okay. Dave, do you know how to get a link uh, to video which is broadcasted public publicly? No. You're asking me. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm, an idiot. I'm an idiot with this stuff, man. <laughs> okay, I hope everything will work because I kind of idiot with my stuff now too because <laughs> I never been on Mac. It's my second day on Mac. So. Yeah, I've, I've got a new Mac going here also. I've also got one of those uh, Thunderbolt Pegasus raids going. Yeah, yeah. I've just yeah, copied yeah, two nice. gigs to it in about four seconds. That's awesome. Thund Thunderbolt is just ridiculous. It's quicker than internal drives. It's just psycho. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I like it so far, but uh, some stuff which uh, I don't like. But anyway, you know, I never had Mac before. Never. So many Mac interesting Mac. features. I would call it features. So we'll see how it will go. Uh, okay, so. I guess we have so many uh, images submitted, so we can start uh, talking uh, about them right now, and uh, hopefully we'll have time uh, at the end to talk about other stuff. Right? Okay, so, uh, so the assignment was some kind of sexy. Oh, some lot of noise coming. Terry, uh, I, I think, think it's cold. Yeah, we need to. Let me mute him for now. Okay. Okay. So what I was talking about? Well, about assignment. <laughs> uh, sexy bottle, right? Uh, some kind of something which uh, they describe as uh, something which can turn him on. <laughs> but this kind of advertisement, uh, creative, but still product shot. Um, let's go. I have this. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, and uh, I'm not going to use that picture-in-picture -picture stuff because it's not installed here, and I'm even not sure if I can do it on the Mac. So you won't see me, but you will see this. <coughs> okay. Uh, so first, Anthony. Anthony, this you, you got two shots. This one and uh, this one. Yeah, let me start a second, unless you want to discuss both. Yeah, well, you, you go. You want to go second with this one? That one first. Oh, okay. Uh, well, when you know, when I showed it to Zenia Larionova, she said, "Wow, that's cool." Uh, and uh, because from my standpoint, uh, meaning technical, you know, technical guy, uh, it looks pretty, pretty well. Uh, lighting and well, idea and realization is really good. But what Jenny uh, told me that oh, she would clean it a little bit more, especially those areas when um, the edge of the bottle, it looks cool, all these little lines. But you know, some places can be, I think, cleaned uh, to make it more like smooth. Um, yeah, the bottle had some uh, texture. Yeah, in like it. Uh, on the Those left, are just looking uh, dirty, is left. that what you're saying? Yeah, a little bit dirty, a little bit uh, glass imperfection. Like, you see this line on the left of the uh, left bottle? Yeah. Like, scratch. Uh, that can be fixed. You know, all this little thing, uh, they, at first glance, like, you don't notice them. But when you fix all of them, and then you kind of switch back and uh, before and after, you will notice difference. That's what yeah, I thought it gave the bottle showed. character, but yeah, I can see yeah. without... Uh, so, uh, that's a technical... Looks like a mess. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's only this is what I can tell you what the kind of critic uh, from the technical standpoint. Yep. The realization um, I like it. It's very those forms. Uh, well, it's pretty sexy, I guess. 
Uh, maybe a little bit, yeah, shadows, uh, you know, the tried shadow a little bit off, but again, it's, I don't think it's an issue. Uh, what, Dave, Dave, what do you say, what do you will say about this? Uh, you know, I, I really dig the shape. I think, I think it works really, really well. Um, would have gone for something else in the background, though, totally. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the difference between the left and the right, um, you've got all these horizontal lines, and then you've got that one vertical line running down. Yeah. Um, which sort of breaks it up, and my eye goes directly to it because the left and right side are sort of symmetrical, uh, and then there's that one line, so my eye just goes di directly to it. Um, I think some sort of a flat gradient in the background might have been a cool effect um, because it would have played off the blue of the bottle really nice. Um, but I think the shape is cool. That's a, that's a, that's a really cool bottle. Yeah, that wasn't even yeah. what I intended and saw that after the fact. Like, well, that actually looks more interesting than the full concept I had. <laughs> yeah, you may, I agree uh, with comments. Uh, try uh, gradient ground. I think Dave is right. It may yeah. really, uh, you know, it can it can be linear or it can be still a circular gradient, and it may be really cool. But my impression was that the right hand side is a reflection of the left hand side. Is that correct? Correct. It's sitting on a reflective uh, okay. glass panel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I figured the backgrounds didn't match up exactly. Oh, this is a reflection. So it's sitting yeah. in the mirror and then flip. It, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's setup as the other shot, but uh, I just cropped in on the one piece that was seem more interesting. I see. Wow. Oh, so that other shot that's just below with the candles—that's what you actually cut uh, cut this from? Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This one, right? Yeah. This, one, this is look. Actually, I think. Yeah, without the fog, there's a glass table yeah, underneath fog, it, and yeah. the reflection is. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you know, uh, w again, when I showed Jenny this one, she said, you know, it's uh, it's like a bath with all this uh, steam coming, and you know, uh, little candles. So it has a lot of emotions. I think more emotions than the uh, other shot. So I like this too. Again, those reflection uh, and another reflection, those lines on the bottle. Uh, I think it's a little bit too much. You know, lost curves, but again, it's just one piece which you can talk. Okay. What did you use for the fog? Say again? Oh, what did you use for the fog, Anthony? Dry ice. Dry ice? Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, that turned out well. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Peter Thanks. Dudek. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. We will be, uh, sorry, I'll be jumping because I'm not sure how much time <laughs> it will take to go through all. Uh, Peter uh, is not, I think he's not joining us, but uh, anyway, uh, this, well, I think I like it a lot uh, from, like, technical standpoint. Uh, again, uh, bottle looks nice except the uh, top, uh, uh, the neck. It's a little bit too bright, and it's not visible uh, what it's on that label on the neck is saying. And uh, plus, uh, either I think you got this too nice reflection uh, on the bottle, and the middle of it is like a, a dark line. If you would use uh, diffusers from both sides, and not diffusers, like diffusers or uh, panels, uh, reflective panels, and create a gradient with light fall off from uh, outside, of the bottle being brighter and then go darker, darker to the middle of the bottle. And so it won't be that big uh, difference between the middle where it's dark and the uh, big sides where we see it's three boxes, I mean, both sides. That's the only thing uh, I would do from technical. Uh, this post-production, I mean, the background looks cool, maybe not uh, sexy. I wouldn't kind of say it's sexy, but uh, concept is nice. Dave, your turn. <laughs> well, th there isn't much more I can say. Your your thoughts were mine exactly. Uh, you know, the it's a cool image. Uh, I dig it. It's just that the product's probably a little bit lost. Um, you know, just washed out in a little bit too much light. But uh, one thing I like is sort of how the uh, uh, the bat wings are sort of arched down, and then the firebird wings or whatever you want to call them in the background are sort of arched up. Uh, you know, the label on the bottle is what I was talking about. Uh, so I thought that was sort of a cool little play on, uh, on, on a conflicting angle. I thought that was neat. I also like the little reflection in the bottom of the bottle also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how, how he got all of this. Obviously, it's post-production, but I think so, it's good. So Alex, you said to, to make the gradient better, to put, what, a diffuser? 
in front of the light on each side? <coughs> you see, it looks like it was two uh, soft, soft boxes or something similar from both sides, right? Right. But instead of soft boxes, we can uh, have diffuser and uh, soft box uh, behind it. Let's say strip box. Okay. And uh, strip box is the way that the diffuser will be not uh, like uniform uh, lead, but uh, like gradiently. If you put on one side that strip box, the other side will be darker. And this wow. other side, that's what's supposed to be uh, in the middle of the bottle where we see the, the dark line. So imagine gradient starting from both sides of the bottle being bright and then going darker, darker, darker to the middle. So there is no uh, border, no, no line between where the... I uh, see. So it's nice and smooth between the... Yeah, kind the of smooth. It's, it's kind of an idea. Uh, that's how I would go. Uh, I'm not sure if I do it exactly. I mean, but that's my kind of right, right. approach. Uh, yeah, and probably uh, make it... Uh, those uh, reflections a little bit uh, at the bottom of the bo of the bottle. It's like going somewhere not not straight. So, if possible, to have kind of connected to the edges of the bottle. Okay, mm, going to next one. Okay, I'm going to next one. Uh, this Chris uh, Kruzanek. It's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, a uh, funny shot. Uh, from a uh, technical standpoint, uh, I think, well, it looks nice. Uh, nice. I, I like the background. Maybe a little bit too bright areas on it, but uh, no, nothing major. It, it looks kind of good uh, as is. Uh, and especially, I've seen the lighting setup. It's real background, uh, and it's not digital. It's how it was done. So it's cool. I like this little drop. Uh, the only thing, if you're talking about sexy stuff, I would imagine finger to be like a woman's finger with long nail, you know, some kind of a little bit sexier. That's <laughs> my take. <laughs> you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, that uh, little bear, I don't know, bear, uh, I don't know how sexy he is, but again. Well, you know, it's the whole dripping honey on somebody and then licking it off sort of idea. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so, 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 yeah, I get it. But my, my only real criticism, you touched on it, yeah, I, I want, a, I want a, a woman's fingernail in there, and I want it painted a red that will sort of match that background also. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to sort of tie in the background to the foreground. You've got the red in the label. Um, you've got the red in the background. Uh, it might have been cool to have, uh, you know, that sort of sexual element to it that most commercial photography plays on with just about every shot. So, um, yeah, I like that drip a lot. I, I like the light in the head of the, of the uh, bear also. I, I think that's sort of cool. You know, really brought the face out. Worked pretty well. Yep, nice. Okay, let's go next. Uh, okay, Craig, Craig Marshall. Uh, you know, I've seen a lighting setup, and I've seen this bottle, uh, kind of, one of the shots was bottle without the digital background. And I like that shot, because... Uh, it's it's on my blog if you want you can you guys can open uh, uh, he submitted the lighting setup so the bottle looks pretty nice uh, and especially I think he did a lot of uh, shots with uh, speed light uh, using it like a, uh, like light painting uh, technique if I'm not mistaken in this shot like this so maybe a little bit bright uh, the beer I mean the bottle inside probably a little bit too bright for me at some areas. Uh, I would have it a little bit kind of more uniform feeling. Uh, and uh, the ground, well, it looks cool, but bottle is kind of hanging in there. I don't think that it's really standing. It's sort of standing, but not completely. So uh, I would kind of imagine maybe just different background. But the bottle itself, uh, pretty good. Maybe uh, I see the rim light, that edge uh, reflection on the left side but I don't see the same reflection on the right, and it's a little bit, um, bottle looks a little bit uneven because of this. So maybe uh, rim light from other side would do a trick, and it will be more, more finished look for the bottle. That's me. Yeah, I, uh, um, I, I don't like that background um, at all. I think the bottle looks cool. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm getting sexy from this or... 
Oh yeah. You know, any sort of a feeling like that from it, but uh, I, I do sort of like dig the the light in the bottle itself, and I saw those pictures on your site also, and I, I have to agree that some of the more stark ones were uh, had a little bit more impact just from a product standpoint. Um, but uh, I, I don't know what I do uh, with with some, a shot like this to try to give it, you know, that. Uh, uh, that, that, that feeling of, uh, you know, want or allure or whatever you're trying to throw into your shot. Um, you know, this is just sort of really a product shot in my eyes. Right. Agree. Completely agree. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Jerry Nielsen. Nielsen. If it was right. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, uh, very nice. Very nice shot. Uh, I like the lighting. Uh, oh, well, I like it. I like it. Sorry, <laughs> I say it. Let's now I can tell you about what I don't like <laughs> because mostly I like it. Uh, what I would fix maybe a um, little bit uh, of the cap and uh, that um, neck, maybe a little bit more light, and especially this little thing on the cap with some something there. Maybe I will put some kind of accent light on there. Uh, but, but but again, I need to see how it will look. Uh, the glass itself, uh, that uh, look, it, it's very cool. Xenia uh, suggested that uh, some of the touch-up will, will fix uh, some of those areas with dark uh, kind of reflections. So to make it a little bit more uniform, especially that uh, piece of kind of gray, uh, Gray brown on the right. Yeah, that's got to go. Bottle. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's not belong there. It should be fixed. I don't know what, what is that. Uh, and uh, reflection, well, probably reflection should be fixed as well to make it more symmetrical. Again, I think it's real. That's how it is. But uh, sometimes we need to, like, if you look at the right side, it looks perfect. Uh, but left side of the bottle uh, and the uh, bottom and the reflection, a little bit off. And uh, yeah. it's, it's yeah, sexy. I'm not sure if it's how it's sexy. Just very good product shot. Yeah, it sort of screams for symmetry, though. Uh, you know that black band in the middle of the bottle itself. Uh, one side should match the other. Um, that white outline that's so nice on the right side should be there on the left. Um, you know that kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, you you'll have to do that in multiple shots or do it in software. Uh, but who cares? Uh, it, it's it's definitely screaming for it. I think it's pretty cool, though. I I love the. Uh, uh, the colors within the bottle. Uh, yeah, get a little bit more color on the cap um, or a little bit more light in the cap and I think it would help it out a ton. Mm -hmm. oh, can, I, can I ask a few questions also, uh, as well? Sure, sure go ahead. Um, yeah, I've finally got in. <laughs> yeah. um, that, that bit that you picked up on Alex on the right hand side, uh, the grey part on the top, let's say on its shoulder of the bottle, um, that was, I was actually it was an, another shot I placed on to give it a bit more of a, a dimension in there because I felt that the bottle was very flat, mm -hmm. and that was what my worry was that there, there, there was no there was no third let's say yeah third dimension in there like you couldn't see any depth of the bottle. That's why I actually put that in. I mean that can come out. That was an extra layer. Um, that was that was really what my worry was. And the reflection I actually uh, knocked down because I found it overpowering the the bottle. Therefore, right. on the on on the left hand side, it, the, therefore, is the um, the reflection part is not that great. So I I, I see what you're going, and I will go there and work on it. Um, you, you I think I think sort of if you're gonna, right. if you're going to look for depth in an image uh, or, or, or or something to give the the viewers a sort of a form of its shape like a curve yeah, like yeah, this yeah. bottle is, I I always look for highlights to do that. Um, you know whether whether it's a sharp highlight or just some sort of a strip box to use to give some you know a, a feeling of roundness to the viewer. Um, uh, more so than trying to add dark into an image, you, know, you look at a lot of my pictures. Um, I leave I leave a lot of highlights in. I, I think I think they add to images a lot, and they also add to the depth of the shot. Um, a good way to see a round part of a bottle is when you put a strip light next to the darn thing, and you can physically see the strip light sort of augmenting around the curve of a bottle. Mm. Um, 
Alex can probably talk better about it, but that that's what I've always done to try to put that depth back into it. Yes, I agree with you, completely agree with you, Dave. Yes, some highlights uh, would be really cool. Because, uh, Jerry, I see what you're saying, but it's, uh, if, if I would, you see, when, you, when I don't know this, it's not working as, as intended. No. That is, no. Yeah, so. no, no, thanks. Uh, no, 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 I know where to go back and try and play around again. Yeah, and, you know, that, that's a really good point that you, you just brought up. I, I can't tell you how many times I've taken a picture. Um, some of, I've got some good friends who critique my stuff pretty hard and always have my whole career. Going back in and trying to do the same thing again and make it better is really important. Instead of just saying, well, I'll apply it to the next shot, um, leave the shot set up for a couple weeks. That's what I do. And then I'll go back a few days later and try some different stuff. Um, so you'll have an absolute comparison to go to. I, I think that's really important in, in all of this, in, in learning. I still do it to this day. So. Yeah, yeah if you can keep, if you can keep uh, lighting set up, it's it's a great it's kind of yeah I'm not a working photographer uh, you know I'm not a working commercial shooter so uh, my studio can stay set up as long as I darn well want it to so it's kind of like a privilege really David yeah oh absolutely absolutely yeah uh, okay Ken Holy uh, got this shot uh, well I think I like concept uh, so it's like a some pillow, right? And we have that the bottle of wine opened, and uh, it's in some smoke coming. So it was something really hot was going on here, probably. Uh, but from technical standpoint, uh, the bottle is really not visible. I would put some lot of work to the bottle to make it uh, well visible. Uh, rim light, uh, maybe highlight bottle, so it won't be like dark piece uh, of uh, something on the on the bright uh, pillow. Uh, so just just like this, bottle should be worked out. Yeah, and the the lighting's the lighting's tough in this one too. You've got that you know sort of purple hue uh, yeah. flying through the whole thing. Yeah, um, at least bottle shouldn't be purple. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's. Uh, um, you know, even though I don't mind really the purple on the pillow, I think that's sort of a cool idea. Um, you know, maybe maybe a little bit more on the reddish side to give that whole you know red hot red heart kind of thing going. Um, like the smoke. Um, like to. I, I I looked at this picture on your site, but I really didn't delve into any explanations that were given for it. Um, but. Uh, I, I like the curvature of the smoke. It sort of brings the eye back into the frame as opposed to just the smoke sort of blowing off to the right. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I think it's a shame. You know, it's a cool bottle. You know, looking at this picture, you've got that nice green bottle there um, with the water beads all over it. I, I think just bringing that out by itself would have helped a ton. Yeah. And... And suggest you looking at the lighting setup. Uh, it looks like you got one light and second one through the gel All on right. the background. And what I would put, I would uh, use white cardboard uh, on the top of the bottle, on the top of the whole thing. Uh, that should, even without any additional light, uh, it probably will add light to the black bottle and uh, and some kind of reflection. And it will be always gradient reflection because uh, you can get. Uh, uh, that uh, like uniform feeling anyway from that light, so that's probably a quick fix uh, for the lighting setup. Just try to add that uh, white uh, reflector on the top of the bottle, and see how it will look. You can move it back and forth. So, uh, okay. Thank you, Ken. Now, I think it's now right. It's yours. I didn't. Yeah, this is mine. Yeah. Very nice. It's clean. It's kind of that's the way how I like it. We uh, at least uh, you know how you represent. Um, so it's it's very nice. Uh, a little bit uh, kind of. I'm not sure how sexy. You know, probably if you use those. Uh, uh, well, forgot the word. How you call that? Uh, what woman wears shoes? Okay. Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Having trouble with shoes there, huh, Alex? Shoes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you? Uh, I would probably move it somewhere, you know, some on little on the ground, maybe like a blur it a little bit, so it 
give me ideas that women drop them to, hmm. go to go to bed or something like that. Because now it looks perfect from the product and point shot if you're gonna like sell uh, the shoes and the bottle. <laughs> uh, because lighting, I like the lighting, uh, probably not many things to edit, it's it's very good. But uh, yeah, probably not, you know, not that much erotic, a little bit more erotic. Yeah, I was having a hard time with this one. Then my wife said, oh, what about my, my stiletto shoes? And I thought, okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you can think of what if you have one shoe and you just sort of nestled the bottle in the shoe itself. So you'd have the shoe sitting there and then the bottle sitting in it. You'd get some nice diagonals going in the frame. Um, mm. You know, something that could, um, you know, elicit the idea of what was happening. You know, the two shoes maybe just laying down uh, with the bottle in behind them. Uh, you know, just sort of scattered as opposed to just set up. Um, right. I think I might have liked this a little bit better if the background gradient was black just going into gray uh, as opposed to oh. trying to match the background with the shoe uh, to try okay. and get that whole tie-in going um, because the shoe just sort of wafts away at the top of it. Um, cool mm. shot, though. Um, uh, dig, dig the lighting on it. I've got, I've got nothing to complain about the lighting on the bottle. That's great. Yeah, great. Well, one more, no, two more things. Uh, no, I... I would probably yeah. lower camera a little bit uh, because usually bottle look better when you shoot it straight. We don't need to okay. see that uh, top of the cup. You know, it's 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 again it's a, it's only me thinking this probably this way. But uh, I I was always looking at those uh, shots of the bottles, and usually they uh, more like straight shot. Straight on. Yeah, I had so I had posted on Google Plus this morning, and somebody else had made that same comment. Oh really? Mm. Yeah, and they said to lower the camera for a better perspective. Right. And the reflection on the bottle, it's not real. It's a uh, strike uh, in the head always. Oh, you know, it's not like this. So pro, I, I, I'm not sure how it should be, but it shouldn't be somehow different. And it should be different. Maybe mm -hmm. because it's artificial, right? It's uh, the reflection yeah. you put it. Yeah, so I'm just thinking maybe, I don't know. Yeah, some, you know, that's what, the, that's what always catches me with reflections. Um, you know, it, it's pretty easy, especially once you start shooting real reflections for a while, to pick out the ones that are sort of created. Because the, the, the reflection never matches uh, the original shot. Um, I've, I get a lot of comments on some of my shots with people who say I mirror just the, like, if you've ever seen that picture I have of the, two, the hand with the heart under it and there's this great reflection of the hand under, uh, mm -hmm. so many people think that that's mirrored. But if you look at it, you know, in the reflection you're seeing the palm of the hand. And in the hand on top, you're not seeing any palm. You know, it's a, it's a dead giveaway that it's a real reflection at that point because it's a different perspective because of the different angle. Um, so uh, I, I, I still like it, though. Uh, I do. I like, uh, I think the lighting on the bottle in this is really great. Yeah, lower, lower the camera a little bit. Um, if you really wanted to get sexy into it, um, you know, when you start thinking about emotions, you've really got to look at things and say, you know, what turns you on? Uh, you know, if you're going for that, or when, or if you're trying to shoot something that's sad, you know, what makes you sad? Um, and putting yourself into the frame is, is really the key to anything emotional. It, it really is. If you can look at a picture and say, "Wow, that really, that really pisses me off," or, you know, that that really reminds me of something that that totally screws me up. Um, you know, my 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 pictures all rely on it. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not as technically good as Alex and a lot of guys out there. In fact, tons of guys out there. Um, but I've, I've sort of found a way to, you know, sort of put a little bit of myself into the pictures, which I think makes, it, makes up for some of my technical misgivings. Right. Well, that shot of your, uh, the needle shot today, that was, that had some emotion in it. <laughs> yeah, that, that series was fun because it made everybody and their brother squirm. Uh, <laughs> I shot like 15 pictures with syringes. Um, but, you know, every once in a while I get a comment like, you know, I really hate syringes, but I really like this picture. And I thought that was cool, uh, you know, the, the four or five of them that I got. Uh, but, uh, you know, trying to, I, I wanted to use something that just made everybody cringe and see if I could get them to get past cringing from it. Now, in a shot like that one today, well, you know, people are going to cringe. There's nothing you can do about it because it sort of was meant to. Um, but, you know, like the shot with all the needles in the skull and the one with the needles into the phone, I, I was hoping people would get past that whole, um, ew, it's a syringe thing. 
Yeah, you yeah. look at this, it's going to make okay, it hurt, yeah, man. This one, uh, sorry, I, I brought it uh, just to show what we're oh, talking thanks. about, for those who didn't know. Well, I love this when you can drag from directly from browser to that viewer, yeah. and it pops up there. It's amazing. Yeah, that, that's pretty neat. I just that, drag it from yeah, browser. Yeah, yeah, this picture is actually uh, hanging in a gallery down in Florida right at the moment. Oh. I was really surprised when the curator said, oh, I want some of those syringe shots. I'm like, oh, you must be an outsider gallery. Uh, so, yeah, it's hanging down there right now. What, what, is the hand, what was the hand made of? Uh, the hand is just a, a hand mannequin for jewelry displays. But the, so are they actually stuck into the... Oh, yeah, the yeah. It's sort of like this plastic, you know, really heavy-duty plastic kind of stuff. Uh, just took a, a small drill bit. Uh, drilled a whole bunch of holes in it and just shoved the syringes in. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Mike Broderick. Uh, well, that's probably the funniest shot uh, from the assignment. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, you I know, I saw, I saw one picture uh, on the net. I did a search for bottles to see what was out there. Um, uh, sort of like, sort of like Ron did. And where did Ron go? Oh, uh, Ron's not here. Yeah, Ron, Ron vanished. Um, but he had dropped out earlier, but he couldn't get back in. I think it's maxed out. Oh, uh, darn! There's there's a limit to how many people can go into these things. Ten ten. Right. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, only ten. Bucks. Um, but the shot was um, they used green bottles instead. And they didn't include the caps in it, so it looked uh, with a little bit. Say you raised the camera up a little bit here, and it looked like two butt cheeks and a pair of legs. And then they had another bottle upside down, sort of hanging <laughs> down in between them, uh, to look like exactly what you thought it was going to look like. It was brilliantly done. It really was. I looked at it and just laughed for an hour. But I laughed at this one, too. I mean, sort of a takeoff on that, but he put his own spin on it, which I'm totally cool with. Yeah. Um, I like the whole idea of the underwear sort of hanging down the, the legs. I, I just thought that was cool as hell. Yeah, only uh, I'm not sure about this uh, course uh, on the background. Uh, is, I'm not sure if it kind of... I think he was just trying to get the product in there. <laughs> uh, you know, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, trying right. to keep this as a product theme, which my shot wasn't in a billion years, by the way. You can't even tell what the hell my shot is. But uh, but I, I think that's why you see the word Coors in there. That, yeah. that would be my guess. Well, most beer commercials, they use a lot of humor in it, so I try to inject a little bit of that into this photograph. I thought it was great. Uh, I, I laughed my butt off the second I saw it, so you, you did Good. well on that. I, I love the lighting on the bottles. Um, I might uh, if, if any criticism I could have was maybe smooth out some of the tones in the bottles a little bit. Um, you know, there's some blotchiness on the neck of the one on the right. Um, you've got this interesting highlight on the by the cap on the left. Um, I might have actually brought that over to the right one also to, to bring that symmetry along. Um, but uh, but no, I did this shot. I, I dug this shot a lot. Thanks. Yeah, probably post-production is what needed uh, for the legs, uh, I mean, for this uh, oh, yeah. uh, dark, dark yeah. stuff. It just, uh, it's not even the lighting, right? It's just post-production and cleaning. And I know uh, it's it's not most of the photographers' task to do this. <laughs> it's kind of... Yeah, uh, neat images, my friend, or Noise Ninja, when it comes to smoothing out tones, I love those damn programs. They, they make my life so much easier sometimes. Um, they, they really do help smooth stuff out. Yeah, I, I really hope we can do some uh, post-production tutorial. Actually, I add to that uh, tabletop photography um, book. We got one hour of uh, post-production there. Really? And, you know, it's, it's brilliant stuff there. Yeah, they all send to you. We record uh, one hour of like Jenya was uh, doing, and I was kind of talking to her, and she was explaining me while doing, and that's what was the video. That's awesome. And, yeah, pretty cool stuff there. Uh, Okay, this is Ron's shot. It's it's a great shot. Yeah, it is. It's really, uh, and especially considering I think it was first shot uh, submitted. It was, well, I don't know, Sunday or Saturday even, or maybe even Friday. I forgot. So it was in short time period, uh, very uh, very good result. Uh, it's hard to critic uh, lighting because I like it a lot. 
the only thing I would probably concentrate more on is a cap because the body itself of the bottle it is great it's really great and I, I don't think I can add anything to it uh, but the cap it looks good but maybe some rim light from the right side uh, some age uh, because it's kind of getting lost a little bit uh, right. uh, what else I like the background uh, and uh, yeah I like the technique it's all uh, light painting again well, the, the only thing in the background that I don't I the, the, I don't dislike, but sort of the, the track takes my eye away is that one area of really sort of the light purplish, uh, brighter highlight there. It, it it's almost the brightest spot in the picture, uh, and my eye sort of wants to go to it, and I don't I don't know how necessary it was to be there. Yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah, probably right. It's a little bit too bright. Yeah. And yeah, I love the little gems. Uh, in the foreground, I, I I think that's cool. It's a nice little element. It doesn't distract my eye, but it sort of fills up the frame a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I, I I really dug this shot the second I saw it. This is uh this is nice stuff. Yep, great great work from Ron, as usual looking at. <laughs> it's a shame he's not on. That that's 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 a shame. Yeah, n I I I I'll fix it in the future. I know how to fix it. Hey, you know what, oh, well. I'll tell you what, he's probably trying to get in, so let me drop out, and I'll just go watch you on the YouTube, and maybe he'll get in. Oh, really? Well, thank well, you. That would be so cool, you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'll catch you on the YouTube side. Okay, see you, Mike. Thank you. Later, Mike. Okay, we'll wait for Ron, and we can move to the next shot, I guess. Steve. Yep. It's See, another wow. The it's wife is the wow. coolest wife in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah, she is. <laughs> the whole, whole concept. Where did we get in? Did Ron. Ron, did Ron make it? There he is. Okay, Ron, welcome back. <laughs> I've been watching. Yeah, so oh, if you mean we, you we can, can, you can join in. and just watch? There's only a limit on who, how many can actually participate? Right, right, yeah. Boy, that's, that's wrong. Yeah, I've, I've I've been watching, but there's a. a, a did you did you get your? I mean, did you hear what you were talking about your shot? Correct. Okay, so you you want to add something, or we can do it later? I guess I don't know. Okay, let's move. Then we'll talk. If yeah. so, Steve, uh, like I said, I I I really like the shot, the whole concept, the realization, and uh, well. The woman, it's your wife, right? Yeah, she is. That's it, just great. I uh, mean, she's she's gorgeous. Uh, from critic uh, and from like uh, technical, what I would do probably different, a little bit different is uh, that uh, how you call them that grass or what? What is that? Sorry, guys, I don't yeah. have words. Not uh, grass. Uh, works. Grass. <laughs> it's yeah, coming uh, like in. With, yeah, it's coming like in parallel, and it's not from the ground. What I would probably do to have like arching, arching them a little bit down no, on that no. uh, uh, left side, so it will be more like a real, you know, like somebody just bend them down. Uh, yeah, so well, environment is. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, originally that was my idea, but my wife didn't want me to cut them, so. Kind of yeah, you but figure. I, re I, re I really wanted to have them like starting from the ground, going in an arc. Okay. But since I couldn't cut them, they were too long to fit in the frame, so I just put them across. I see. Yeah. Man, if she's gonna get dressed up like that, man. You can't argue with her too much. <laughs> you really yeah. can't. I mean, that, that is, she's oh. a good sport. Now, does she have contacts in? No, I, that was post production. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I was gonna say those are the most amazing green eyes I've ever seen. Uh, but the maquillage, uh, the thing on the, her face, it's real or post-production? Yeah. No, it's that's real. real. I only added in post-production a bit uh, the spots uh, near the near the hairline, mm -hmm. and oh, okay. I retouched uh, the eyes because I couldn't have them dark enough with the with the makeup. So mm -hmm. I see. 
Uh, one one more thing about the bottle itself. Uh, the lighting is great on the body, but cap a little bit losing. I mean, it's a little bit darkish. So what I would do, it's not possible to get it probably in one shot. You, to add some uh, light from behind, like green light for the cap, so it will be okay. at least uh, half, or well, uh, uh, one side of it, you know, with the age light on it. It will really pop up and kind of finish the look because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, losing in the darkness. But okay. like I said, with those um, widths, it won't work because you will highlight them a lot. So probably it's like separate shots or, or maybe it will work if you find the angle to keep bottle, not to keep too much in. But otherwise, great shot. Really great. Thanks. Yeah, I don't, I don't know really what, what more to add to this with the exception of I'm not looking at the bottle, I'm looking at your wife, so blur her out more the next time. Uh, <laughs> that's about that's about all I can give you, man. I, I it really like it was blurred. I yeah, did blur it in post production. Idea. It works really well. Uh, great job. Yeah, thanks. Some noise. I think coming from Anthony. I think it's blurred. Uh, okay. Um, next shot. Uh, well, team. this is one. Of, this is probably my favorite of the night. Yes, yes. It it looks so well, so sexy. <laughs> it's a woman's <laughs> back and her butt. I mean, exactly. it's just <laughs> uh, you, you you aren't going to get anything looking more like a female form in my eyes than this. Uh, yeah. But not overtly trying. You know, I've done all studio photographers. I think at one time or another have taken two light bulbs. Um, put them together and tried to make it look like a butt going into a pair of legs. Um, but uh, but I've never seen it done this way, and I, I thought, I man, I just thought this was great. Technically, probably not the best shot in the world. Uh, you know, the highlights are a little bit too much, but, uh, you know, as far as trying to get a feeling in a shot, I think I think this worked really well for me. Yes, yes. I, I don't know. I, I can't add anything because lighting is... Uh, well, it's kind of secondary here, you know, yeah. uh, and, it, and it works really well anyway, because, I mean, it's not like, oh, you don't see product or you don't see anything, uh, or, for example, the chap. Why do you need the chaps? Because it looks, <laughs> it, you got what, what he's trying to deliver, and this is the most important. So, great shot. Uh, let's move next one. And this is, it, it was submitted probably a few, a few hours ago. Yeah, I actually saw this. Um, yeah. Well, um, well, yeah, sexy. Go ahead. Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. I'll leave it uh -oh. Is there a bottle in that shot? Oh, um, wow. yeah. Not, not quite sure, but uh, um, yep. Yeah. Uh, well, about bottle, I think uh, bottle should be highlighted more for sure, oh, yeah. especially Absolutely. the glass, mm -hmm. because it's the dark hole of the glass. You see labels and no glass, so it should be some rim light or I don't know. I mean, I know it's dark bottle. But uh, probably we don't know how it was shot, how many light sources, or did did he submit? I'm sure. Anyway, mm. I don't think so. No, I think no, he, he doesn't. He doesn't have any description. Okay, so uh, he probably had uh, like uh, one light uh, somewhere just on the left side or so. Uh, maybe that's why. But if uh, we put two diffuser, just the bright, uh, I mean, white panels uh, on both sides of the bottle. It may add, I'm not sure how light was coming and going, but it may add some way bit more highlights on the glass. And the reflection. Reflection should be the sure. I mean, it will be there if you put uh, the two reflectors from both sides. It will create the rim reflection, which will fix the bottle. And uh, the woman, uh, well, maybe just a little bit more symmetrical, but nice idea, I don't know. Kind of sexy, maybe a little bit too much sexy. It's more like uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, more you know, sexy maybe, than erotic, you know. <laughs> yeah, I th I think if you would have blurred it, blurred her even more, yeah. uh, you know, maybe maybe not allowing us to see as sharp a form as we're seeing. But you know what I was hoping to see this week, and I don't have models, so I couldn't do it. Um, one of my favorite shots of all time was a great picture of an acoustic guitar, and it was sitting sort of on its side, and behind it was a girl laying there. And her curves matched the, the guitars almost perfectly. But all you saw was the curve. There was no air. You didn't see any boobs or anything like that. Yeah, I, I but, think I've seen that before. Yeah, and that, that's one of my favorite shots. Now, look at this girl and how well that bottle would probably match her curves. 
You know, she's got that mm -hmm. skinny waist, and it would almost go around her hip really nice. Uh, if you just turn it on its side, instead of being overt about the sexuality, uh, why not create something more sensuous, uh, you know, that way? Um, I sometimes wish that I, I had the gumption and strength to mess with skin tones, but I don't. I can't stand the things. Uh, if I never shoot a human being, I'll be a happy man. Um, but... Uh, um, I, I thought that would make a really, really cool picture, and maybe someday I'll give it a shot. Yep. Okay. So, thank you, Paul. It was good and interesting shot. Uh, now, Dave, wet? You got yeah, wet? and sorry I didn't upload one to your site, Alex, without my, my vanity uh, crap on it. Uh, um, well... I don't know. Do you have it? If you have, share. If not, just tell us. Uh, uh, I you said I five, five uh, light sources. Why are you have five light sources here? Because I'm insane. Um, <laughs> uh, I've got. I, I got that uh, uh, that uh, transparent plastic stuff mm -hmm. um, that you uh, um, that you suggested, Alex. I got a roll of it in last week, so I immediately wanted to try it out. Um, I, so I put it sort of, you know, draped it over the set. I don't have enough room for a boom, um, so I can't get one light source hanging directly over the set. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually had two strip boxes up top angled into uh, the plastic. Um, the other one was a snoot uh, that I created out of cardboard with a red gel uh, blowing directly at the heart. Um, there was one more, you sort of see those really strong blue highlights on the top to the right of the bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that came in from just one Einstein to the right, and I actually think that's it. I think there was four. I think I had a fifth one on for a, light be, uh, for a while because I wanted to uh, catch some highlights in the drops. Um, but I, I got it, but it created a convoluted mess. There was too many white spots all over the darn thing, so just decided to go. And, you know, I was trying to sort of relay, uh, you know, the curves of a, of a, of a nice form um, and the, uh, the red-hot love that might go along with it. I don't think I accomplished it too well, to be honest with you. I, I could have put a lot more time into this shot. Uh, sort of dig the light, but the concept isn't as strong as it should be. Um, I, had to, I had to remove a couple of the red specks because some of the reflection coming off of that heart um, bounced into the blue a little bit. It was pretty minimal, and I was surprised by that. But, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's an okay shot. It's nothing I'm tremendously proud of. Well, I, I like it a lot because the concept is great as usual, and the light. And, uh, I just want to kind of uh, talk about a little bit uh, the kind of the power of diffusers. Guys, if you look at the top of each bottle, you see it has kind of reflection, brighter reflection, uh, a line going on the top, uh, and then it kind of come into more like dimming, uh, I mean, it, from bright to, you know, dark areas. It looks just great. I pick up the form. We see this bottle, uh, they kind of rounded, right, because of this. Uh, so that's, that's great, Dave. Uh, well, and I wouldn't have been able to do this if you didn't suggest that stuff. I mean, that, that stuff is brilliant. I wish I had found it a couple of years ago. Uh, it, it just makes light so darn smooth um, and gives you that nice gradient. Uh, yeah. So um, I made a real mess of my studio <laughs> using it. That, that's tough stuff to work with with one guy. Oh, uh, yeah, one, yeah. Or you need to have, like, I don't know, 10 uh, support uh, stands with those arms. Because it's really hard. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I had to use almost everything I got <laughs> to get it. You know, cl I've got clamps everywhere, and this crap mm -hmm. is hanging down. And it, it it reminded me of a canopy after like a, I don't know a thunderstorm for about four hours. Mm -hmm. You know, all sagging in the middle, and I was <laughs> cursing, and uh, it was. Uh, um, my studio is no place for young children, and I'm really. In the shooting, I swear. <laughs> Well, mine too, but we have them here. But it's really <laughs> not made with them. Uh, okay. Thank you, Dave. Great, great shot. Thank you. Well, this is my uh, kind of uh, variant. I have a video, as usually, uh, about how it was done. I'm not going to do it without sound. 
it's not gonna work. Uh, but uh, you haven't tried it on your new Mac yet, though. He, yeah, yeah, it's it's especially yeah, on the Mac. I'm not sure. Well, I tried. I tried. It didn't work. If you just share YouTube, raw, uh, I mean, it's it's not what I want. I will I will post a video anyway on the uh, on the blog post, so you'll see them tomorrow. Uh, let me talk about setup because I have it here anyway. Uh, so the idea was to get these bottles uh, leaning one to another, like uh, male and female characters, you know. Uh, obviously, Russian vodka is a male, and uh, that some liquor, French liquor, it's uh, female. And uh, the lighting was, uh, as you see, the only one front light was that strip box on the bottom. And I didn't want to, when I was trying to use strip box just directly to hit, uh, even from the bottom, to hit those bottles, the uh, label of the vodka, it was too glossy, and it started, you know, giving the kind of harsh reflection and I didn't like it. So instead I was I got this big uh you don't see how much how big it is but it's relatively big uh cardboard, white cardboard and you see it's angled and the strip box is hitting only cardboard. It's below table so it's not spilling any light on the bottles. And on that cardboard it created a gradient. Again the bottom was brighter and the top of that uh, cardboard was uh darker. And it created, if you look at the bottle, it, it was pretty good reflection. Uh, even on the cup, you see that uh, a little bit brighter on top and then going a little bit darker. So all the light from the front came from that, from that board in the front? Yes, yes. It was only one light. You see uh, the strip box on the below the table. That's it. Right. And three lights behind. One light is on top, on the boom. I started from that light. Uh, I was thinking to get it uh, so it will highlight the bottle uh, from behind, because both bottles are made. It's kind of it's perfect and very mm, pleasing to work uh, with uh, subject because it's not reflecting stuff and uh, it glows if you hit light from behind. So I tried that light uh, on top. It worked well, but uh, it wasn't well enough. So I what I did is this. Uh, this is my background. First, I dig a little hole uh, <laughs> and stuck a uh, light uh, behind it, which just by a reflector, big reflector. Uh, and uh, it was right behind the bottle of uh, vodka bottle. And it looks so cool. It's kind of, it's like you get some really light inside the bottle. So I created another one for the uh, liquor. And it it's at what I needed. Uh, and the last one, uh, I got this hole uh, for the touch, touch down, I don't know how you call that, where they touch into each other. It's kind of where film gets uh, fired, you know, the sparks are creating or whatever. And the last one, I don't, truly speaking, I'm not sure how sexy those um, drops. <laughs> It may be like uh, coming from your nose, not from you know. <laughs> but I well, now that you've said that, that really, <laughs> that really that, that's for sure. But uh, uh, first, I did drops from that um, uh, point where they touching each other, and drops were actually sliding uh, on the bottles. On each bottle, it was like a drop coming. But Jenny didn't like it, said it's not really visible, so we end up uh, creating those drop droplets. And it's real, it's from uh, hand uh, soap. We got this hand soap and it's so thick and it's so transparent, so I just... Uh, on the video you will see uh, everything, I will show it for you. Uh, this again, this is set up from uh, camera uh, angle, a little bit from camera. And what so do you have? Because that just felt or something? Or what did you use on the yeah, table? It's, it's kind of felt. It's uh, it's a fabric, but uh, it's very non-reflective. It's felt lids. I, I'm not sure. Or like a like velvet or something. Well, well, yeah. It's uh, like this feather. You know that fabric with feather. You know it's it's dark. It's re it's really dark when it's uh, highlighted like this. Talk so about the spotlight in the background there, Alex. What sort of a grid did you use on that? Oh, on the yeah, on that one, yeah, I forgot about all about uh, that spot. Uh, well, it's grid. It's 15 degree uh, grid uh, on the big reflector, uh, Feinstein. Okay. Right. And what I did, uh, it's not visible here. Uh, 
I got a piece of foil and I covered the uh, center of that grid. So it was more like circular light. Because I wanted to, to have, uh, like, mm, it's not really visible here, but the idea was not, not to have too bright uh, on the that, right. uh, mid middle point. And if I just lower the light, it's still too bright uh, comparing to the outer edge of that uh, glow, you know? So, so you I basically covered. created a mini beauty dish. Yeah, kind of. Beauty dish, yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, so that's how it was done. The only thing I would have liked to have seen on this, Alex, I want to see the bottle sweating. <laughs> You know, we got it. I have it. I, uh, the last thing we did, uh, I uh, sprayed them uh, with uh, water and it was sweating. I can probably even show it to you, but uh, uh, I'm sure if I can. But I didn't like it, you know. I didn't oh, no. like it. Yeah, I, I'll post it. Um, I can show it now. It's somewhere. Again, two computers. I'm not really migrated yet. Uh, because it was too, um, what I did, it was just real regular water, and yeah. the drops were too small. Bottles relatively big. Uh, ideally, it should be not real sweat, but uh, uh, some artificial with bigger drops. Yeah, sort of That's like cool. I, I think I watched. Uh, I think I watched uh, a video off a of bill site where he was physically placing. I don't know what he was using. My guess oh, is. Yes, yes. Um, I, I, what, do you know what he was using the, when he was placing those individual drops? Uh, was, yeah. that, was that corn syrup or glycerin? or? I, honestly, I don't remember. I, I remember what you're talking about, uh, that uh, uh, interview or whatever it was. But, uh, you know, there is uh, solutions for this. Uh, they sell it. Uh, it's probably that the same studio in New York which sells a lot of cool drops. Uh, it's tough. Uh, it's almost like corn syrup, but it's probably um, a little bit more clear. By the way, that corn syrup, is it clear or a little bit yellowish? It's a little bit yellow. Yeah, oh, absolutely. What, uh, the only issue with that syrup, it, it's kind of, uh, if you put it on uh, something really bright and white, uh, it will be yellowish. So there is a thing which, uh, well, I would probably use the same uh, hand syrup to put all of this, but I didn't have time, you know, to put 100 drops uh, to make it look like sweating. Like I said, I, I'll post, uh, because we had this idea. Actually, the idea of sweating was the uh, very first idea. But then uh, we come with those tears. And, uh, yeah. So those holes that you cut in the paper, that's, that's what showed that kind of a uh, bright spot between the two. And then what about the slits in the paper? Is that, that's what showed the glow through the, the yeah, bottle? Yeah, the slit, the slit is behind each bottle. That's uh, so cool. <laughs> so first I did slit for vodka, it like it, but then if you look actually how I did it, uh, it's funny. Uh, you see few slits covered with uh, tape, because I was trying to kind of, uh, without actually measuring, but because it's projection, it's not the same distance. So I got one, then I got second one, and the third one was uh, right uh, behind the bottle. I would have never that thought right of that. My next question, question: How many times did you cut in there before you got it right? Well, three, three. You know, it, uh, the problem that uh, kids were not behaving well, and Jenny was with kids. If I have one more people uh, in studio, it will be much easier to get it. You know, <laughs> I would look at the camera and said, "You know, go there," and then you hit it with knife. But we were walking alone. But this technique is is a great for bottles like this. If it's made uh, or dark bottle. It, it looks great. You got uh, cardboard behind, you get a hole, highlight it, and then you can play with the background as it's just uniform background because it's not affecting anything basically. Maybe to figure out where to uh, put the slits, you can use a laser pointer. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. But we need a yeah. second uh, guy there. Oh, right. right. <laughs> That's the problem. I was alone, so I was kind of. <laughs> well, now you know what I'm running into all the time. <laughs> I'm always alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Alex, okay. uh, how wide were your strips on the that you cut out? Uh, how wide strips? It's probably yeah. like finger wide. Finger. Okay. I mean, small, small really. Uh, you see, if you look at the bottle, it's uh, especially the vodka bottle. It's too much for it. 
because it's a little bit too bright in the middle and the, uh, the top portion, a little bit. Uh, and because it was only one light source, uh, I needed to have to be really bright to get that um, sparks on the middle, because if it's not bright enough, uh, it's not creating, it's just visible hole in the background. So I put like maximum power, and it without any snoot, it just uh, that long throw reflector of pulsy buff. Well, I have it there. Uh, it's you see right. it there. Uh, so it was a lot of power uh, right in front of the camera. You see, I was getting splashes today. Yeah, what, I, I was going to ask you. It looked like a, like like one of the twisters hit your place. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we cover as much as possible uh, because it was. The, the splash is a problem. It's hard to get a uh, nice curved splash in small uh, kind of scale. Yeah. It's much easier to throw, like, you know, big bottle of something and it will create a splash. But in small studio, it's a tricky. <laughs> well, your, your <laughs> studio is huge compared to mine, man. I'd love to have the room that you're working with. Uh, yeah, that was the reason that we, uh, why we bought this house. Yeah. When I see yeah. this area, you know, you know we're going here. How big of a room is that? Studio. Well, it's it's a basement, and uh, it used to be the home theater. Oh. Okay. Uh, it was all painted in uh, Burgundy, you know, dark Burgundy. <laughs> and I, I put like ten layers of white uh, uh, paint to cover it because it was, you know, it's hard to get really white uh, if you cover some red paint. Right. So it was. You've got high ceilings, though, don't you, Alex? Well, yeah, relatively high. Yeah. I, well, so I never mind. Nine or ten foot? Mm, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, because, you know, my, my main limitation is I'd love to be able to get a boom in my room. Uh, right. Yeah, you see, I've got, I've got maybe seven foot ceilings uh, <laughs> in my studio, and I couldn't have that overhead that you have right there. But um, it's still not enough, you know. It's yeah. Enough for many, yeah. many shots. I would uh, like to have something big, uh, you know, hang a uh, big soft box, but I can't. Especially if I shoot people. For products, it's fine. Yeah. But tall people, you don't have room. Yeah, I've actually been thinking of going and renting a space lately. Oh, know, really? Just get it out of the house. Uh, because there's still there's, there's even too many distractions at the house. You know, there's always something I should be doing or, or should have going on or whatever. So uh, I, I'd uh, like to get my own space that I could just, you know, build an absolute man cave and just go in and shoot for days at a time. So... I almost rent space here. We even were looking and almost found uh, non-expensive, but then uh, we got this idea to move to California, hopefully, so it won't be necessary. I will kind yeah. of survive yeah. here and then, because it's commitment and all this stuff. Excellent. I think we got... Uh, let me tell you about... Well, two things I need to not to forget to tell you uh, about the uh, next assignment. Uh, now is my turn, and uh, let's do watch. Just regular watch. Uh, some creative shot, kind of product, obviously, to the product, uh, but I think it's advertisement shot. So something. No, try not to get just plain sh shot of the watch. But again, I think it's even plain shot will be good exercise because it's very, uh, sometimes not easy to shoot a watch, so let's get men's or women, any any type of, but it should be wrist, uh, kind of watch, small one, not the big. It will be our assignment for the next week. And for the assignment submissions, I've seen how many issues with, uh, when you submit yeah. on the blog, it links, and the problem, there is a plugin where I, I can install it, uh, and you can upload the image uh, to, directly to my blog, and it will show up as, same as I did for my post. But it's not the problem with security. This plugin is now disabled. You can get it uh, through regular WordPress uh, because uh, it's a big hole. Uh, people can upload something with JPEG uh, extension, but it can be a script, and they can hit it uh, somehow with, you know, like run as a script, and it will blow up. I mean, it will give access. So instead, I'll create a blog. Oh, sorry, forum, discussion forum. It will be a forum where uh, new assignment will be new topic, and we can. It will be upload images, same thing. But uh, on on the forum, it's not a problem with this. Uh, somehow it works much better than blog. So we'll have a forum where we'll submit results, where we can discuss it, where we can. Uh, well, it's much easier to discuss it on the forum kind of things than on blog. With 
Uh, so it will be same, akilstudio.com uh, slash blog, but it will be a link to forum. It will be inside forum blog. Oh, okay. That sounds great. Yeah, so hopefully. It'd it be nice to too. Uh, you can uh, edit the posts in there? Yes, you can add posts. Uh, you, the only thing, you need to register. It's free, but uh, I can't let any, you know, like, uh, unregister post because it will be cleaning from spam. And, I mean, we, can, we, we don't want to do this. Uh, just uh, register there because if you ask, you need to log in or register first and uh, do a post. And uh, yeah, I think I'll create topic, and we can know uh, anyone can add post to it, right? So we'll be able to get, get to it just from the normal blog. Yeah, it, it's in the blog. It's actually BB Press. It's a plugin, but it's uh, basically standalone blog inside the WordPress. Hmm. Okay. Like forum. Forum. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. You'll just, just put a just put a link up on your page and we'll find it. Right. Now the way I was putting my photos on, then I'd put them up on my site and then I just grabbed the link from my site and just stuck it in there and they yeah. showed up fine. That worked for me too. Yeah. I was actually grabbing from Google Plus, so that okay. actually worked well. Uh, yeah. But the problem I was having was I, I couldn't actually edit the uh, the linked the image, so if I wanted to update the image, um, I had to repost. Right. So, yeah, right. yeah that was... Yeah, hopefully it will be with edit, because uh, I already created, actually, but uh, the layout is really crazy. But when I post, I see edit button on my post. So I think okay. uh, if you post... That's because you own the blog. Yeah, pro but... Hopefully, I mean, it will work out. It should be the well, way... I, I think in the forums, the, any, any forum I've been in, you've been able to edit your own posts. So yes. ho hopefully it works the same way there. Yeah. Right. If it won't work under blog, I can easily install just normal forum, uh, PHP forum, uh, standalone, and we'll do it there. But I want to keep it... Uh, I actually plan to move my blog to new location with new URL. With, it's pretty interesting project because blog is not blog anymore. I want more personal blog where I can kind of express myself. But when if I do it on Akil Studio, people just don't like it because they won't expect. I mean, they expect some studio stuff from me. Right. So I want right. to kind of separate this because I want to talk a little bit more about stuff I like or don't like in general. But uh, it will be <laughs> that announce. Okay, any questions? Anything uh, you want to add to this? Uh, I, I got a question. Uh, a quick question. Oh, go ahead. Uh, where'd you get the plastic that you were talking about? Oh. Sorry, I think. <laughs> I, um, yeah. I bought it at Adorama. That, that, that's where I got it from, I think. Um, I think oh. Alex had it on Amazon, too. It was like 38 bucks. B, uh, I bought it in B and H, and the plastic is uh, there is a link on my blog, uh, and uh, yeah. oh, okay. I can post it again. Well, it should be. Let me check. It should be on my equipment or something like this on the blog. Uh, if not, yeah. I'm in uh, the in last week's assignment, you put up the link in it. I mean, right. in in your explanation, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, Dave, it's yeah. that isn't it called Savage Translum or something? Yeah, like that? that's exactly. it. That's it exactly. They have it on. They actually have it on uh, Amazon. I found it on Amazon as well. It's like yeah. for, uh, forty yeah. bucks for an eighteen foot roll. Yes. Uh, do you do you like put several layers down or just one know. layer of it? There it is. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Yeah, it's, uh, usually uh, one layer is enough, but uh, you only need two layers if you want. Uh, let's say you don't have soft box. But you want to create some right. kind of very, very uniform uh, uh, panel uh, with light. If you put just right. one uh, and just uh, like regular light, it will be just a uh, you know, circle, right? So you get two of them, and second one will be pretty more, much like softbox. Oh, okay. Is that would that work with, uh, is that would that work with uh, con uh, continuous lighting? Any, any light, yeah. Any. Oh, yeah. For example, I'm using it a lot with uh, when I shoot... Uh, does generally for a tutorial, which hopefully I will end before I'll die. Uh, you see this light? <laughs> uh, uh, same thing. It's, it doesn't matter. The, the cool thing is it's, it's, it's only a uh, difference uh, in exposure and shutter speed, right? Mm -hmm. You need okay. to get uh, mirror lookup. 
if you have it on your camera and uh, you can use like one second or so in each shutter speed with low lights and get the same result. If it's not moving. <laughs> Is that a completely <laughs> opaque material or can you actually shoot the light through? Oh it? no, you shoot right through it. It's, oh, okay. it's translucent. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's basically softbox material but it's plastic. Yeah, it's okay. plastic and uh, you see, it's, if you put light on it, it's white. Basically it trans right. transmits some light but it can be like uh, just, I, usually I put it on the table to have white seamless background. You know, on a table with uh, mm -hmm. like even shooting table, boom, little shooting table. But if I put light behind it, let me show it. I can do like live demo, I guess. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Is it visible or not? Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. It's, it's pretty much. Uh, you see, this is two layers, right? And it's uh, all okay. the box. You don't see any anything between that. So it's pretty cool. Thing. I don't know. Somebody. Yeah. Say it again. It was pretty. It's pretty easy to cut that stuff. Yes. Yes. Just scissors. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. The question I was going to ask is on. on uh, anybody have any suggestion on on booms? Because I, when I was trying to take my shot, I was trying to. I had a softbox high up above my bottle. And then my boom, I have a cheap, I just had a cheapy boom from my eBay or something like that. I think that's kind of what you started out with, Alex. And, uh, right. yeah, it kind of collapsed on me. So I started looking, <laughs> I started looking on B&H and, I mean, they range from like 100 bucks to like $2,000. And, and, you know, it's, it's the $100 one, I think it said with the boom extended, it can only hold two pounds. Well, I think the light weighs two pounds. So it's just looking to be collapsed again. So... I don't know if anybody, any of you guys have suggestions on a, you know, maybe 200 bucks, a little less than that would be nice set up. Uh, you, um, I just got a, uh, one of those, it, it's a round clamp with, uh, can hold two poles in uh -huh. it. You put one on the light stand, and I got uh, one of those extendable, uh, like, paintbrush arm poles oh, from okay. Home Depot. It won't hold a lot of weight. It, it does bend. Right. But, uh I actually went to the uh, photo store and got a used uh, boom arm for, like, the Alien Bees. Those lights are five pounds a piece. Yeah. And that, that still bends, but, and the light stand actually starts to bend. Oh, yeah, yeah I, it's fine. I've got, I've it's got something a little more sturdy for long-term use, but <laughs> yeah, it works. No, you know, uh, my, my boom actually is uh, from, uh, it's, it's not broken yet, but uh, it's very <laughs> inexpensive. But, I mean, it's, it will broke uh, soon, I guess, and, or not soon, but and I'll be on the market, same as you. But you know what, the idea it can be very inexpensive. You can have uh, background stands, uh, like two stands with that bar for background. And uh, set costs uh, less than 100 They're starting from probably like $50. And away from it. And I think you can just use clamps and put any light with relatively big weight in the middle of it, I'm right? Sorry. And if it's like long, uh, I have this, well, it's... Are you talking about for like a background, like the two booms for a background? Yeah. Well, when I you think think instead, of boom, instead of boom, use like P, instead of, uh, you know, like R, you use P. Right. In both right. sides and then bar and then you can uh, hang any, anything on, uh, on it. Well, right? when you think how much a roll of muslin weighs, you know, in those cloth backgrounds. Right, they're uh, heavy. Those things weigh a heck of a lot more than any light you'll ever hang from it, that's for sure. So, Has, um, it, has anybody ever used electrical conduit? Go to Home Depot and get electrical conduit? It works that's right. Too. It's yeah, just the, it's how do you hold that conduit? Because conduit ex is kind of heavy. It's heavy and it's cheap, and you can get them 10 foot lengths for 5 bucks or less and hold it on with clamps. I've done that several times. It'll hold a Muslim background. This is what that's, I have. That's a great idea. You see, this is what I have. Uh, it's, again, something from, uh, like, Legacy. This stuff is extendable. This is a bar for uh, the, the ground. But the cool thing, you can have it extend, and it will be, like, really long. Uh, and you can hang anything here, right? So, and it has these holes, little holes which uh, you stick on the stands. It can be actually any stands, because cheaper stands uh, starting from, I think, $20, right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so it can be two light stands. Uh, and yeah, I think where mine broke was 
but right at where the stand was, it kind of started, and I had it weighted <laughs> down with sandbags, uh-huh. and then it just kind of broke at one of the at one of the oh. junctions. Because it was, you know what? How I do to preserve a boom? I have counterweight not uh, on the base of the stand, on but the on the piece of the boom itself. Uh, oh, yeah. I had that too. Oh, you had, oh, okay. <laughs> I see. oh yeah, I had that. Yeah, so like I had, so here was like the, the 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 fulcrum right here, and then it came mm-hmm. past, and then I had a, a bag hanging there, and then on the base of the base of the thing, I had a sandbag sitting on there to keep it from. What what and light are you using? It's, it's funny enough. It, it, there's some cheap lights that I got on on uh, through Amazon. They're um, I think they call it newer. Or it was the guy, the guy who had the shot. I don't know if he's in here right now. The purple. It was the one with the smoke coming out of it with oh, all yeah, the yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. If you look at those lights in there, that's the light that I have. Okay. Right. You know, I've got speedetron lights, and I just bought a calumet and a boom arm I use on one of my regular stands. And it'll hold a calumet light with a softbox on it. Oh, okay. I mean, not a calumet, a speedatron. Yeah. Yeah, I actually well, just I, did an experimental watch shoot, and I, I needed a, a boom, um, flash on a boom, and, and I I was trying to use my calumet tribal lights. <laughs> They're so stinking mm-hmm. heavy, though. Um, but, you know, I was using um, an aluminum box to weigh it down, not saying oh, wow. that. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, I, I just ended up switching to a, a speed light, which didn't have them have the modeling light on it, but uh, I could at least at least get them light up there and 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 shoot down. So. Right. Mm-hmm. That's why wow. speed lights are easy. They're they're <laughs> light. Well, I've, I've got a a non um boom arm with the with the orange end piece. That works well, and I used it for my studio <coughs> lights as well as my speed lights. Um, but I, I, f- I had a problem as well. The stands that I were using was um, they were, it was actually bending where you put the put the um, yeah the, the, the linkage onto the the boom arm and the stand meet. I, f- I was getting that the stand arm was starting to bend there, so I yeah. actually upgraded the stand. That was a, qu- a little bit expensive, but uh, the Monfrotto's uh, arms um, boom arm was it's around about 130 pounds. I bought it in the UK and got it shipped okay. over. Um, but that's done done great. But um, if if you really want to still stick with boom arms, but that holds a studio light as well as uh, speed lights. So nothing though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, actually, Manfrotto. I agree with Jerry. Manfrotto probably is the best if you want to like pay probably a lot, but one time it yeah. will be Manfrotto. It's great stuff. Yeah. yeah. Have Manfrotto, all my stands, like all my tripods, they're all Manfrotto. Pull it yeah. out. Yeah. But you said, Dave, you don't yeah. have a boom, right? No, I don't have a boom. I don't even think I can fit it in my room. What I was actually thinking of doing was just running a bar from, you know, or a, a night, you know, like what Alex was showing, just run it from one side to the other. Just have it, because I can always move what, I, since I don't shoot people, I, I can just move this stage, the stand uh, to sort of complement the overhead bar. Um, right, so, just hang it from above. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I think idea. I might go that way. Um, because, like I said, I had to use two boxes to get that even lighting across my piece. Uh, because I just couldn't hang one right down the middle. So. Right. The other thing about the hanging, though, is that the nice thing about a boom is that you can put the light there and then, you know, move them exactly where you want them to be. Just like in Alex's shot for his bottles, how he had the soft, you know, the, uh, the strip boxes kind of you know, there and angled. Well, if you know, if I had that bar and then was able to add, attach some sort of a swivel head to it, um, you know, just get uh, some sort of like a regular stand attachment that allows you to swivel. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to work it out because I definitely want something overhead, um, but I just don't have the overhead room to do it. I've just got low ceilings. So, oh, oh. David, do you have white ceilings? Uh, yeah. Do you have white ceilings? Uh, actually, I've got. Um, the sniper, oh, hold on a second. I don't know if you'll be able to see because my light sort of messed up here today. Well, I can't but, see it. No, you can't. It's a styrofoam ceiling. Is that uh, I just uh, that thought about putting the light on the stand and just using the hole and placing the light up at the ceiling. Oh, yeah, to just... You use that as a big soft box. Yeah. Yeah, just bounce right up there. It, it, you know, I pretty much want to use strip boxes and everything overhead, so... 
uh, you know, to get sort of more thin, thinner kind of lights, that sort of thing going. I, I definitely need a form of a light source. But, yeah, I've used yeah. my ceiling a lot because, you know, it's this perfect little square grid pattern on top of it all, which has really uh, played <laughs> into some of my pictures pretty nice also. Uh, especially on some yeah. of the chrome stuff I shoot, I'll just bounce it directly off of the light, the, the, the roof, and I'll get this nice little checkerboard in it, so it sort of works. Any part in the well, I thought maybe barn doors on a light, too, would, would yeah, narrow that light down. Sure. Yeah, you know, I looked at that one, Alex. I see, I see what you're showing there. Oh, yeah, you, you look. Yeah, I see it's like uh, it holds uh, 22 pounds, and it costs like $140. And... Um, well, can you can you copy and paste that into the chat real quick? The the link. Uh, so can grab yeah, it. Sure. Yeah. Now let me. Uh, you got to use Command C this time, okay? Yeah, that's what exactly. Still <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I started off on, on, on Apple back in the nineties, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's uh. I, I don't have it, but I heard that uh, that Hollywood Century C stand that they they kind of good, they relatively not expensive. Well, it says seven. It said max load twenty two pounds. I mean that's, I mean really that's overkill for what I need, but that that gives me flexibility really. Yeah. That might work. Nice thing. Yeah, uh, nice thing. Yeah, if you think about the uh, three box or soft box uh, on the light, it may wait a lot, you know. I don't know, guys, if you have any, uh, I get this big soft box, uh, it's almost like a strip box, but it's uh, probably six feet tall. And it weighs like half of me, it's a palsy buff, and it's, uh, it's kind of expandable, you can collapse it, it's a soft box which, you know, you can carry with you. But it's so heavy, I, I couldn't imagine that any of these stands can hold it. <laughs> <laughs> I almost never used it, because I bought it, it got so big. And then I stop shooting people, and I don't know. It sits there. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, I gotta call it a night here, Alex. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody. I think we done. Uh, it was great. Uh, we all got to uh, watch next uh, next week, right? And we're done. Thank you so much. As usually, it will be posted on the blog, and this time we'll have forum uh, to discuss everything, to post the images, and uh, it will be much more easier. You so have a couple of minutes, you. Alex? Oh, yeah, sure. We can talk. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <coughs> now it's officially uh, ended, so if you want to leave, leave. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Huh? Hey, good night. Thank you. Good night, Alex. Good night. Good night, good night, good night. Good night Dave. Now, yesterday I was uh, asking you questions on the, on the chat there uh, about the speed lights. Mm -hmm. um, you think they like they have enough power compared to uh, strobes? Uh, you see, I still don't know how to convert that a good number to what second. But uh, yeah, I I tried looking it up, but I didn't quite find what it's. You know, I think it's, it should have enough power. Um, like I said, I was doing a lot of uh, my splashes uh, for a long time using only uh, speed lights, Canon speed lights. It's probably similar power as those uh, Yako On or how you call them. And uh, it was enough. And, you know, if it's not enough, you raise ISO, right? Shoot it 200, shoot it 400, it still will be pretty good result. But you got four times, you know, less... Uh, and the requirements of the light. So I think okay. if, if you're on the budget, you can use them. It's but when, I, okay. so. when I first got uh, Ellen Cole D lights years ago, they're about the same power as the Einstein. Mm -hmm. uh, with no modifiers, those at full power seem to be about two stops brighter than uh, 58 uh, stro uh, speed lights with guide number of 58. 58. So, uh, see, I don't, it really depends on the modifier and how the light spreads and a lot of different things, so it's hard to make a direct comparison, but uh, that was the closest comparison I could make, and Einstein seems similar. Yeah, the, the biggest so, problem with uh, those speed lights, uh, for me in studio, it's light modifiers. It's hard to mount anything in them, and you need to put a lot of kind of thinking how to make them work, because... Softbox, it's much easier. Put softbox here, 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 and in 30 minutes you can get a shot. 
Imagine same with uh, those uh, speed lights, without softbox, only with diffusers. You need to hold diffusers somehow, right? You need to have maybe two of them between, and it's like for everyone. And it's it's doable, but it's just some headache. So grid number, okay. oh, I see. The Canon eight, uh, 580, the most the powerful, right? It's 58 meter. And uh, uh, Anthony, you said that uh, it's about two f-stops uh, lower than Einstein, which is uh, 640 watt second. So it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. Right. Yeah, and uh, the, the strobe was, was bare, bare bulb, very spread out, and of course the speed lights are pretty narrow and somewhat directed. So yeah, you, you know, yeah, still, yeah, it's you need to work work them out. You can put uh, like I don't know, did I show it or not uh, before? I'll show you. I think I did show this kind of thing which I did to yeah. to be able to use it with uh, light modifiers of boxes for um, pulse from pulse above. So I just stick it uh, there. And here you see I did, uh, I kind of cut out uh, those openings to make it brighter. But if you leave diffuser as is, it will be perfectly diffused light right here. And here you can mount the box or beauty dish I have on there. It has uh, enough power to go through the soft box? Well, it's, it's need a lot of power. So you probably won't be able to shoot uh, splashes with soft box mounted on things like this. Because on full power, it's too long flash duration. But if you're going to use to just still life, it will work. Again, raise the ISO if, if you need. Because you see, uh, those lights, uh, those uh, which you showed me, uh, they cost how much? Like around $60, right? Yeah, the Yang Yo. So, yeah. So the closest strobe, uh, Einstein is pretty cheap strobe, right? Um, you need to spend, I don't know, 300, 500 at minimum, and you can get like six of them for the price. And power yeah. of six will obviously overpower one and time. <laughs> so. Can I come in with something uh, on the strobe lights? Um, I got um, ad adapters, or whatever you want to call, um, that you can put on. You can put your softbox on here, uh, beauty dish, whatever. Um, and it's from, and you can go onto the onto the uh, stand. Right. I can up and down it. Oh, that's cool. I can swivel it around, obviously on the stand anyway. Uh -huh. And they they are made by uh, Inter in, in, Interfit. Interfit. Fit. Yeah, the strobe stuff. I think it's in B and H as well, no. Yeah, it must be. They're, they are. If I can get them in Europe, you can get them over in the States. You can get everything over there. I wish I was there. B and H is like a little uh, toy shop for me. If I could, if I was ever over there. Um, but I, I actually now, funny enough, I've gone over to Speedlights with a lot of lot of uh, shots because I got I use a portable studio when I go out and do any shoots, and um, I'm using three Canon lights. And I'm I was thinking as well of getting a couple of extra of these Chinese um, uh, speed lights as well, just to have it, just in case I needed a bit more light or an extra light coming in from somewhere. So, and I use, like I say, I use those Interfit um, stand, well, uh, modifiers, you know, holders, let's say, holders. And I've been using, I can then use my uh, soft boxes that I have for my strobe lights. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and have, uh, Interfit has a lot of stuff. I just posted the link. They have yeah. soft boxes, lights, and if this thing yeah. can. Yeah. And, and 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 I've been I've I've got some uh, speed lights from uh, Lasso Light, and I just whack them on there. Or I and I also went and bought some strip lights from Interfit as well, so there was no problem of of the fixture. Um, but I I love them. I love them. And 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 now, funny enough, like I say, I'm I'm shooting more with speed light at the moment uh, than than with my studio lights. Mm -hmm. The only issue I'm thinking about is maybe like battery power and maybe yeah, trying that's to that, find yeah, that, the, is, uh, that is the one thing you always got to the adapter. Yeah. Um, well, I, I just I haven't got. I know you can buy these extra battery packs for them, but they they are expensive. Um, but I just use up the charge charge batteries, and if I start thinking, oh, 
it's time to change over, I just whack them over and put the other ones in charge again. So, um, obviously if you're going out for a shoot, you need spare batteries around all the time. So, that's something you always have to plan about. But, um, I, I've shot all day with them. And, um, yeah, still keep, still knocking out reasonable power. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I'm, I, think, I think they're great. Oh, that's right. I was actually thinking of uh, making an eighth for them. So I'm inside a house or studio or something, I could put them in, and whenever I'm outside or something, I could put batteries in and mm. use them like that. All right. Real. Yeah, a little price here. The uh, policy buff has the uh, Vagabond mini lithium batteries. Very small, light, uh, not really too expensive for what they are. They are about 300 but yeah. make a wonderful portable setup. Yeah, that's great stuff. I, I remember I did that uh, do-it-yourself with uh, just a bigger battery, but it died. Yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you see, the inverter couldn't hold up long. It died. It's already dead sitting there. I don't know what to do now with it. It has nice battery. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was thinking about doing the same thing if I'd buy some strobes, but a uh, bigger version of it, using maybe a car battery or something. But, you know, I did it before uh, Paul Sibov had that lithium. Lithium is the best. I would never uh, bother doing this because it costs less. It's uh, two, 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 two or around 31, but it's, it's not big. And small, uh, powerful, that's probably the best option to go with. Yeah, I use mine. It's cost a lot anyway, if you put it yourself. It cost for me almost hundred dollars. So it was just experiment. That's good. Okay. Okay. All right. good guys. I think I need to do, go to sleep. I guess too. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Thanks kids, have some times they don't sleep well, so we don't sleep well. That's the biggest problem. With kids. Uh, Alex, I got one question again. Then. Um, you, you had mentioned once in your blog you were doing a European hangout. Has that have you taken that off or? I I no I won't I won't do this. Uh, right. I mean, I, hopefully tomorrow at well let's say 12:30 yeah. p.m. at Eastern time I'll go online. I don't well I I'll put something on the G plus but it won't be like oh official thing because I no. will just uh, hang in here and uh, waiting, maybe somebody will come and we can discuss. Yeah, so tomorrow I'll do it. If I okay, will be, yeah, you know. Yeah, because last week, e even though I got on, I got up early for it, I was actually doing something else, so I couldn't, I couldn't be there for it. Mm -hmm. Well, I will I'll, I'll probably contact you then. So if okay. don't get anyone, you get me. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully, let's, let's talk tomorrow. Yeah, I'll yeah where are you? Are you like, you're, you're in UK? No, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm obviously a Londoner from my accent, but I live in Denmark. I'm married to a Dane, so uh, oh, okay. we're over here, and I'm, I'm trying to build up my business here. Nice. It's not so going like very well. <laughs> so it's like 5.30 in the morning there right now, huh? Correct. you got it way <laughs> off. Yeah, 5.35, exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it's a bit early morning get up, but... Uh, 5.30, yeah. so you started at 4? <laughs> yeah, I, got, yeah, yeah I, got, I, I was up at 3.30, in fact. Okay, I'll do every week uh, Thursday at one, well, at twelve thirty p.m. for you guys. You need to sleep night. <laughs> 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 I'll do it because it's. I'll be up at fast too. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're you you're you're in um yeah UK. We're an hour in front of you, so you're even earlier. That's true. Yeah. Wow, you know me. Yeah, I'm, I'm down in southern England, so, yeah, thanks for the time down. Yeah. Well, at least now, we, now, now Alex, you've got two people maybe coming in tomorrow now. <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> well, time to move uh, to go, guys, so yeah. catch okay. you next week. Cheers. Awesome. Take yeah. care. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's time for me to go, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.